the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. In episode 125, learn sustainable self-care strategies for female leaders to prevent burnout and boost well-being with Leslie Gorday. Burnout is real, and I think a lot of people are just not having enough conversation around it. They don't recognize it as burnout because they think, oh, I'm just stressed, or I'm just tired, or I'm just kind of like having an off day, like I'm just irritated today, but not recognizing that they all, all together is really most likely a sign that they're doing something in their life that's pushing them to a burnout phase and These are just signs for them to say, uh, take a look, something's going on in your life that might be causing you to be stressed all the time or tired or irritable or or frustrated uh, with things that might not really bother you at all, or maybe being numb to your emotions. And so you really don't respond certain ways. Maybe you become a glass half empty person instead of that optimistic person that was always thinking like the, the glass is half full, always looking for the, for the, the solutions, but now you focus on. All- Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, the space where stories of strength, resilience and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Rose Davidson, and I am honoured to be your guide on this journey of empowerment and healing. Today, we have a very special episode tailored just for you. Whether you're driving, sipping a cup of tea or simply taking a moment for yourself, I want you to know that you are in a safe space. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community. It's a beacon of hope and a reminder that you are not alone. In this episode, we have a guest who will share a story that resonates with the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience, and the unwavering strength that lies within each of us. So settle in, take a deep breath, and let the healing journey begin. But before we dive into today's inspiring conversation, a quick reminder, if you find value in our episodes, Consider supporting us by subscribing, sharing, and leaving a review. Your engagement helps us to reach more hearts and spread the message of healing. Today, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Leslie Gorday. And Leslie is going to be discussing with us uh, the self-care strategies that we can use um, to prevent burnout. And some of the things that we'll be discussing is um, understanding burnout, daily self-care rituals and mental fitness. Now, Leslie is a self-care strategist for female entrepreneurs who are service providers in the health and wellness space. She specializes in systems that transform daily stress and constant overwhelm into clarity and calm. By optimizing how you use your time and energy, you enhance your professional and personal performance while also creating space for personal fulfillment ensuring you're present for life's important moments, both in business and beyond. And if you're leading a team, uh, these strategies will foster a supportive and thriving environment, enhancing team productivity and well-being alongside your own. Leslie, it is such a pleasure to welcome you to the Healing Through Love podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here, Rose. Thank you so much for the invite. Our very great pleasure. And Lizzie, what uh, pro- prompted you to, you know, look at uh, burnout in in the in the professional arena, um, which you know also leads to professional development. Yeah, so the reason why I started looking at burnout was because I started noticing, especially on social media, this is really where I started noticing the trends of women uh, posting online about how a couple of things. One, they were either really um, 
overwhelmed and saying, you won't see me for a while. I'm going to be taking some time off to take care of me. I just need this this time and space. Uh, other times I saw posts where women were saying, hi, I'm back. I know it's been a while. It's been a few months, but I really needed to take this time for me. And so I started like really digging in a little bit more and started having conversations with women uh, in business and asking them about their experiences of what's, you know, around this particular thing, because I started noticing the languaging of being tired, overwhelmed, stressed, and started having these conversations and come to find out that many of the women that I've talked to have had burnout stories, meaning they have, um, some of them really severe, others not as much. And there, I have like different stages. I have four stages of the of burnout. Uh, but they tip, the women that I've talked to have made it all the way all the way through to uh, chronic uh, burnout syndrome. And this is where you you can't function, where you have to take that time away from work, away from your responsibilities, and it's it's not a it's not where it becomes like you can think about it and take the time. It becomes that's your reality. You have no choice because your body and your mind are are fighting you on everything that you try to do. So you'll find yourself procrastinating. You'll find yourself feeling less motivated and not wanting to do things. And that's because your body has just said to you, enough is enough. And you, now you're you're forced to take that time. So I really started noticing the trends, but also my own experience. I've had experiences around burnout myself, and I started really doing some digging of my own history going back through time. I feel there's clues there. And so when I started looking back on my own history, my own work history, I noticed that there were moments in my lifetime where I've had burnout moments, but not recognizing that there really was a pattern that showed different warning signs along the way. And because I wasn't, I wasn't self-aware enough about it, I was missing those signs and leading myself all the way down into burnout, not necessarily full on where I had to take many, many uh, months off, like some of the women that I've talked to. But in the professional side of it, I did come, get all the way to the third stage, which is on um, crisis and uh well, sorry, it, the final stage is crisis and burnout syndrome, but the other the other stage is like where you're almost at burnout. And so I ended up finding myself there a couple of times and then full on burnout. The most recent really the experience that I had was really around emotional burnout. And I'd love to be able to talk about that today because I know that that can be really hard, uh, especially there's signs that you probably won't even recognize in yourself unless somebody point, has a com you have a conversation or start even thinking about it. But these are really the reasons why I started talking about it was I started noticing the trends and then I started you know, doing some digging, having some calls, also looking at my own history and, you know, just knowing that the experience, uh, wanting to be able to help women not have to go through that, make that a, make it a, I want it to become a conversation that's not just, oh, uh, where it becomes the norm where, oh, so-and-so is going through another burnout phase, but rather how can we actually support ourselves, support our community, support the people in our lives so that they don't, get all the way to a full burnout, um, you know, situation where then everything stops and they either are hospitalized because that's happened or they have to take off uh, weeks or months from work. And if you are a solopreneur uh, and you don't have anyone helping you and you have to take weeks or months off, that could, uh, you know, be a loss of revenue for you. So there's really, this is why I wanted to really start talking about this topic. Yeah, and it's an interesting topic because as women, we don't, um, we just plough through, you know, and we think, you know, that, that um, you know, we feel a little bit tired or, you know, we can't be bothered and, you know, we just shove it in the background because you know, there are so many expectations on us to, you know, um, you know, be present all of the time. And, you know, we don't recognise the signs um, that we could be heading for burnout. And so I'd like to, for you to touch on, you know, what are the signs that we should be looking for? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I think, first of all, a lot of people don't recognise uh, about burnout is that it can start without you actually feeling like you're burning out. Because as an example, if you're in the professional setting, 
you are working in your business, or you maybe you have a corporate job and you are excited about what you're doing. You might be working on some big projects. You might be expanding on some things. And so you get into that, that creative process. And this, the, this is really the first stage of burnout, which is the honeymoon stage, because what happens is you, you end up in this place where you're everything you're, you're so excited and you're so committed and so driven that you might find yourself pushing through uh, and not really uh, taking those breaks, the mental breaks, which I think are really important, um, especially when you are working on something, because if you, if you continuously push yourself to the point where there's no breaks, you're working 10, 12 hour days, as an example, with without really taking adequate time to, un, you know, allow your brain to reset, to recharge, like to really kind of like what I like to say is digest what you fed it. What you're ending up doing is you're constantly overfeeding your brain. It at, at some point, you're not going to be able to retain everything because you need that time to really like process. And when you are, especially in, in the beginning stages where you might be working on something really fabulous, you might think that, oh, I've got all the energy because you feel that way, because you feel good about it. It's something that excites you. But when you don't take those breaks and you allow that to continuously go, go on and on, you end up in the next stage, which is onset of stress, because then in the onset of stress, you then that's where things start to happen. You start to feel, um, as an example, you know, you might start feeling fit, more than just fatigued, but maybe chronic fatigue, you might actually find that you can't sleep because your brain is always on because and I, we like to call it monkey mind, but your brain is always on because that could be that you don't have a process in place where instead of unwinding, winding down at the end of your day, you work until 10, 11 o'clock at night, and then try to go to sleep, and your brain is still on. And so it you can't sleep because your brain's trying to process. And so then, or you get so caught up in everything that things start to stress you out that you wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, I did this wrong or something. I forgot to do something. And then that keeps you awake. So that caught the, the cause of, of insomnia. Or you might start to feel like detached from things. So another way, emotionally, you might feel detached from you know, the things that are going on around you, uh, if you get all the way to like, to the point where you become desensitized, I guess, to the things going on around you, because you just don't want to deal with it. So things you just become detached from it. And then you might even but then you also on the flip side of that might feel helpless, um, that you can't, you can't do the things the way or process things the way you normally would, but this is because you're pushing yourself and stress is the biggest problem. It's the culprit. It's behind that all. Um, and then mentally, you might even find that you have that reduced performance. You can't concentrate. You can't focus. You don't show up the same way that you normally do. And so that's just like for workplace burnout itself like that could just be that but then you also have the other side of it so let's talk personally because burnout doesn't just affect you it affects the people around you because everything that's happening to you could be that you're um you are making other, other people around you feel the effects of what's going on with you as an example emotionally you might feel like very very um Emotionally, you might feel very uh, like drained, emotionally drained. And so as a mom, so you have children and your children want to play with you because mommy's home, it's, it's work is done, or if you work from home and now this is time for the family, but you just don't have the energy, then your children start to, to feel like they're neglected. They feel that way. And it's not because you want them to feel that way, but you just don't have the energy because you're drained, not only physically, but emotionally, uh, even mentally. Uh, and so that can affect your children, maybe even your relationships with your significant other. You just don't have the time. I, for as an example, can share. Uh, I've been in the industry of law for over four decades. And before I stepped into it as my own business, where I still support a team, but it's I choose how many hours I give to them through the week. 
And but when I was working for them full time, I was working from seven a.m. and I would get up at five. I'd get to work by seven, and I'd work until six. But most of that time, I wasn't taking a break. And then after. After work, I would bring work home or on the weekends. So I was always working and that affected my relationship with my husband. But it also affected me because I became very emotionally, um, I became very emotional. Like everything, how I would respond to things always came from an emotional place. So how I would respond to requests from my husband, to, to having conversations with him. I couldn't, I couldn't respond to him without the emotions becoming part of it. And so I realized at that time, and this was back in 2017, that change needed to, to happen in order for my life to have any quality of life because I didn't have that quality of life. And so, you know, this is really a kind of some, some of the symptoms, um, some of the other symptoms emotionally um, as well that you might want to take note of is that you might have a you might have like in the very beginning stages is another it's kind of like a honeymoon stage for emotional burnout where you are over investing in other people in your in your life that could even be at work but let's talk personally you might have people in your life where you are emotionally support you're supporting them uh someone's going through something so you're showing up as that person you have a strong desire to help them uh even at the expense of your own emotional needs even at the expense of your time and your energy and this is where you become overwhelmed and drained or you might feel tired all the time irritable towards other people like i said this cannot this doesn't only just affect you it's how you show up in the world based on how you're feeling because burnout is real. And I think a lot of people are just not having enough conversation around it. They don't recognize it as burnout because they think, oh, I'm just stressed or I'm just tired or I'm just kind of like having an off day, like I'm just irritated today, but not recognizing that they all, all together is really most likely a sign that they're doing something in their life that's pushing them to a burnout phase. And these are just signs for them to say, uh, take a look, something's going on in your life that might be causing you to be stressed all the time or tired or irritable or, or frustrated uh, with things that might not really bother you at all, or maybe being numb to your emotions. And so you really don't respond certain ways. Maybe you become a glass half empty person instead of that optimistic person that was always thinking like the, the glass is half full, always looking for, the, for the, the solutions, but now you focus on all your problems. So these are just some of the things. Um, I believe emotional burnout and professional burnout, even though they're different, they still play off one another. Um, that's, I guess, a conversation for another time. But yeah, that's really the, some of the things that if you were to pay attention to, uh, could be signs that you are in a burnout phase. Yeah, it's it's interesting because um, you know burnout um, manifests itself in in lots of different ways, and and those of of us that are actually you know going through um, an emotional time, you know, especially when the relationship is emotionally abusive, you don't mm-hmm. you don't really recognize that you're actually in that burnout phase. Because the the emotional abuse has been happening, you know, on such a regular basis that uh, I think you know you don't you just become you try to numb yourself, I guess, from from the abuse that's happening. So you know, recognizing um, the stages of of emotional abuse and emotional burnout can be quite trying for a lot of us. Absolutely, and especially if you're in a situation where maybe somebody is manipulating how, you know, manipulating you through verbal abuse that may turn into physical abuse. You know, I have a history of, you know, having, you know, my mom, I grew up in a home where we had a physical, my mom was physically abused for six years of my life, years of my young life between the ages of eight and 14. And then I almost repeated the the story for myself when I was uh, 20 years old and I ended up in a relationship with someone who was verbally abusive and I stayed with him for almost five years and recognized finally somehow recognized that I was actually repeating a pattern um, that could have escalated into something beyond just the the verbal 
And so we we don't often recognize it. And that's one of the reasons why I feel that it's truly one of your biggest allies or assets that you can have in your life is community, community of people who understand um, they may not be going through the same thing as you are, but they understand enough to give you that space and they're empathetic towards they're not they're not they're compassionate they're not feeling sorry for you but they're feeling um compassionate for you compassion for you uh being empathetic you know allowing themselves not to just judge you because you're going through something i know i've heard and i don't know if you've heard this before but i've heard people say well why is she staying in such an abusive relationship? And they don't fully understand that it is that whole breakdown of the woman that you were uh, and you get broken down to become a woman that maybe doesn't have the confidence in herself to believe that maybe she deserves more or better uh, because you become so, I guess, I guess, you know, numb to, like you were saying, you're trying to numb everything that you become numb to like the better and, and realize that this is, and, and think that this is what you're, that is meant for you. And so I think it's, it's one of the things as a, as a community, we can come together. Those of us who may not have experienced the actual abuse in a way that some women do, but might have experienced it in another way as a child and witnessing that, that we can come together and support each other to help each other through things that, so we don't feel like they were alone. Because I know when you're in that situation, you do feel like you're alone, even though you know you're not. You, you do feel like you're isolated. You feel like you are all alone in an island by yourself and that no one would understand and there's also that shame and that guilt for shame that you're in this and guilt thinking that you're to blame for your circumstances, which is so far from the truth. And yeah, so I really love what you're doing, bringing awareness, because we need to be able to support each other so that we can change the narrative of being the silent person who's going through in silence, suffering in silence to allowing themselves to say, this is what's happening to me and getting that support emotionally. And then however else the support that they can get, but not, I really feel like community is such a huge, one of my self-care tools, I believe is community. And I use that for self-care is people to support me in all areas. Yeah, I am. I beginning of this year, I, finally admitted my, to myself that I was actually going through an emotionally abusive relationship. I've been married for 33 years now. And um, I think the whole time there was just emotional abuse right through it. And I, I didn't recognize it because you say, as you say about patterns, I lived through, you know, several or through childhood as uh, my mother was emotionally and physically abused. And then I just, you know, lived through relationship and relationship and relationship and, finally you know um got married for the second time and um you know didn't I guess recognize that that's the type of relationship I was actually living through and as I said until earlier this year when I finally admitted to myself that that's what the relationship was unfortunately my husband's got Alzheimer's and so I can't really just leave him and and then you know let him fend for himself because I'm not that way inclined I, you know he still needs my support until I can become financially independent which is going to you know take some some time it's not something that happens overnight so I'm still stuck in this emotionally abusive relationship and it's really taking its toll on me you know physically and mentally and uh, you know so I can uh, you know I and actually went finally to, and sought help which has you know been my lifesaver to be honest because I was thinking of you know harming myself early this year because I just couldn't live with it anymore it was quite difficult so I you know I get this whole burnout thing because not only do I have emotional burnout I've got carer burnout as well because he's been sick since 2017 he's he had cancer and I you know nursed him through that and then he got Alzheimer's so I'm nursing him through that and it's 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 quite toll taking on on your mind and your body but you know, I I'd like to uh, to hear your views on some of the self care rituals and and the mental fitness that we can you know use to you know overcome um, these feelings of 
worthlessness and and you know um you know some quick routines that we can manage every single day to to help us through yeah so thank you so much for your share i i know that can be difficult to really be going through something and then you're sharing this and and you're still in the midst of of your experience but i want to say one of the things i think is really a powerful tool is journaling i know um, some people may not like journaling, but I think sometimes when you're in, for example, a relationship where as yourself, you find yourself, perhaps, you know, the journaling part is getting out your feelings and how you feel and getting those thoughts out. Because sometimes we want to say those things we we make, but we don't we don't have the courage to say it or we feel like, oh, maybe I can't say it because of the specific circumstances that I'm now faced with. So getting it out on paper and having it out of your brain and at least allowing yourself that little bit of relief. I, I also feel that it's important to have boundaries around your time and your energy. It can't all be about the other person, especially if in your case, uh, as an example, yes, you're a caregiver and, and that's wonderful that you're taking care of someone, but you also cannot deny that you also need to care for you. And so I would suggest is really like having the some some boundaries around your time and energy, meaning having those times where you say, okay, these are my times where I'm going to just whether it's going for a walk and, and and getting out of the house and going and doing something else that brings me joy just for the sake of it bringing me joy and getting away from everything else to allow me, first of all, to have time for myself, but also to pour in, you know, to replenish my energy, making me feel good. I feel like gratitude is one of the biggest tools um, or joy uh, is a great, a great emotion to have. But you, how do you find that joy? It's finding the things that bring you joy and doing those things. Um, one of the things, as an example, I've been reading a book by uh, Dr. Aditi Nurekar, who wrote the book called The Five uh, Resets, and it's rewiring your brain. In essence, she wrote it, it came out in January. And there's a there's a, an exercise she calls the rule of two. And it's really just about doing things for yourself that bring joy. So, um, and they be, they're they're all around based around what she calls eudaimonic happy, with eudaimonic, which is the the eudaimonic happiness, which is really just doing things purely for the joy of doing them without guilt or feeling like you have to accomplish a goal or anything like that. It's just for the sake of doing it. So. As an example, maybe you love to write, maybe you love to paint, maybe you love to do sculpting, maybe you love to um, go to uh, go to the animal shelter and dedicate uh, an hour every Tuesday. That is just like one of your things that you love to do. And that that is just for the sake of bringing you joy because you love being around animals or you know, whatever that looks like and finding just two things and bringing those into your life. Uh, what I loved about that was that, again, it's not about setting a goal and cre creating some kind of like metric where I can, oh, like I'm going to accomplish something in two weeks, three weeks, a month from now. But instead, just doing it purely for joy itself, nothing else. And it's just for you. So that's one of the things that I would uh, su suggest Another thing is, um, and as I had suggested, journaling. Also, finding time. How do you start your day? I, I believe as women, we feel like, again, we we are nurturers. It's just, it's in our DNA. It's how we've been for generations upon generations. That's just how women are. Whether we have children or we don't, it's just a nurture. We have that nurturing, for the most part, that nurturing uh, characteristic about us. And we oftentimes feel selfish for taking that time for ourselves. But I want to pose this to you that, uh, and I'm saying to the audience, that if you are, if you're not taking care of you the best that you can, and you keep depleting your energy levels and serving, you end up serving from an empty cup. How is that going to help you when you show up in the world? Because you're not going to show up as the best version of yourself. You'll show up irritated, frustrated, tired. Um, you might feel, again, uh, emotionally numb from specific things. Uh, you might 
be detached. Maybe you used to be empathetic and now you're no longer empathetic. Uh, maybe you have emotional breakdowns where you have frequent crying spells, your mood swings up and down all the time. And so when you find yourself like that, what does that do for you? Because it's not just affecting you, it's affecting everything, affecting everything that you do, the people that you see, the, the things, whatever, whoever you interact with. I believe that if you want to have that true joy, even though you might find yourself in the middle of something that's just not so great, is to focus on you. How can you make life better for you as far as what's at, in your control? And the control part is the self-care part you know, looking after you, making sure that you have moments, pockets of time just for you, taking, getting away. If that means uh, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, you go out for lunch and you're not around the people that are emotionally draining you. Uh, finding those, those times for yourself is really super important. And just pouring into yourself, getting the community support is really important, I think, we often overlook it. We think that we're alone with things and that we shouldn't ask for help. We're ashamed to ask for help because people are going to look at us differently. They're going to judge us for being in the situations that we are. But instead, that just keeps you suffering in silence. So instead, reaching out, finding those communities, get the support, admitting out loud to yourself that this is what's happening to you and, and then extending yourself grace and no, and and allowing yourself to say, I, it's not my fault. It's not my fault because a lot of the time it isn't. Again, people who are whether they're emotionally abusive, verbally abusive, physically abusive, they typically start out with undermining s specific things about you, your personality, how you are, and they bring you down to a place so that you do start to feel like you're worthless, that you're not worthy of better or more. And it's, so it's finding ways to actually build it up. And so those, the, 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 the eudaimonic, the rule of two, I guess the two, the, the rule of two, just for the pure joy of it, I would definitely encourage your community. The second thing for mental fitness is finding times to become mindful. So you've probably heard mindfulness, um, and meditation, things like that. But I'm talk I'm talking about being mindful by for example, closing your eyes and listening to the sounds around you, the closest sound uh, to the furthest sound, allowing yourself to become present in your body, just in, in just within, in the moment, the present moment, to even this, the, this, the sense of touch, you know, rubbing when your eyes are closed, rubbing two, two fingers together and feeling the ridges of your fingers and just becoming super aware of that. Or even this, uh, feeling your breath, doing the breath work, um, the breath going into your lungs, into your belly and back out again and feeling it going through your nose and what it feels like when it's going in, if it's cool and when it comes out, it's warm, like paying attention to those things. Again, it's bringing you back into the present moment and allowing the outside noise to disappear. Uh, those are some of the things I think would be really um, good for the community as well. Uh, but mostly I think too is if you are finding yourself in a situation is don't allow yourself to isolate yourself, get, get support, um, find a community where you can get that support, reach out and have, and allow yourself to admit it so that you can then, because when you hear it, when you hear your own words saying, I find myself that I am being emotionally abused or I'm being verbally abused or I'm being physically abused. When you hear it in your own words, in your own voice, that hopefully is going to be enough for you to say, wow, I just said that. Now I need to get that support and finding that support. So I hope that was helpful. Absolutely, Leslie. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. It was, um, it, it's great, good points to take on board and, you know, something that, you know, we all need to, I guess, practice, even if we're not being in, in, in an abusive relationship. I think it's just something to take on as a general life skill. Um, uh, I'd just like to share that um, if you would like to know more about Leslie and the things that she can help you with, you can find her on um, 
on the website at herextraordinarylifebydesign.co. She's also on LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. And Leslie, I'd like to discuss with you, um, you've got uh, some, some product or service that you'd like to share with the audience today. Yeah, so I actually run, um, I do holistic balance and success audits. So it's really a self-care audit where um, what the person would do is they'd send me their, they would just answer a series of questions. So I'd have them, you know, go through a questionnaire. And what I would do is I would then um, go through and find out what their gaps are, what their strengths are, what uh, some areas for improvement, uh, just uncovering some hidden things that they might not have realized are hidden so that then when they, once uh, I get all of that information back and I go through it and review it, I will give them a written report along with a video report uh, to help them so that they can start to really like put self-care into their life. Because again, when you take care of yourself the best that you can, then you can show up as the best as you can, whatever situation you find yourself in and giving yourself that permission piece and that courage to actually go out, perhaps that courage to then, you know, speak up and ask for what you want. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, we do all need to look after ourselves and we all need to practice those self-care rituals. Leslie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's been a lovely meeting you um, and great. Good luck with everything in the future. Thank you so much, Rose. You as well. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast. Music.